Papa boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, so I lowered the front end a little bit. I put the TLB roll bar in it. I put the superior control arms on it. Then I just had the engine out this week. I oh, you just did? Oh. Uh, I just repainted and resealed it. I put a 74 spring trout on it. It's just 1915, single 44 Weber. It moves, it gets going. Right. I like it. It's a lot of fun. Hopefully, we get thrown off the track the last lap. <laughs> Pass the pace car and get kicked out. That's the plan. Good to see you, my friend. How you doing, buddy? Good to see you. I, I heard you roll really past.
right there is perfect. <laughs> You're so crooked. Touch the wheel this way. Other way. Okay. Okay. That's so cool. third brake light. Oh, is it? Yeah. This is this actually lights up to the third brake light. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's cool. When you, when you hit the brakes, that comes on. Well, the car's a 40 horse. It's been big board. We've done the Judson supercharger. We've modified the Judson supercharger because it belonged on a 36 horse. We liked the two pulley system, the two belt. So we did some modifications and switched a lot of parts out to bring that all together. We've tried to keep things retro in style and period correct looking. So the air breather is actually a Fram oil filter that's been seriously yeah, modified awesome. in order to be the air breather. You've got the Marvel Mister Oiler, Judson Magneto. There's a lot of retro parts have been refitted like the 36 horse uh, unit to hold the spark plugs. So a lot of things have been done to try to keep it period correct looking. The theme of the car is the Tiki Hut Deluxe, aka the Bamboo Express. So you've got the theme where all of your uh, bamboo and your uh, tiki stuff, and you've got your thatched running boards. You've got real bamboo as the trim. <laughs> That's awesome. You've got coconuts for mirrors, dual mirrors. You've got oh, coconuts dual? for the the hood crest that actually has the VW logo in it. So the whole car, South Florida is famous for having bugs on the front of their car. So we do have to uh, honor the bugs, for the bugs, in the bugs, with the bugs, and the love bugs. Because we're at a love bug Herbie festival, so we have love bugs on our car. And that brings the whole car together. And look at this driving ride. This is so you don't want to be without driving lights in Florida. You definitely got to have enough driving lights and fog lights because the weather changes drastically in South Florida from one minute to the next. So that's it in a nutshell. Oh, AKA, we have an antenna. The antenna is a tiki torch, but the antenna is hidden inside and graft through, and the antenna actually works. Oh, and show me the interior. This is a, the interior. Yeah, you You've got have Herbie, things. the love bug, headrests that have been made up and will be for sale soon. And we have the dashboard. We have Motolita steering wheel. We have the uh, bamboo access, the uh, accessory tray underneath. We have the sunflowers because we need to have a little brightness in our day along with everything else we have a roll cage for safety because safety is important and uh it, it, it just brings it all together it's it's a fun treat for everybody to see the theme gives everybody a little something different to look at and everybody can have their own idea about it awesome awesome it's uh it's just fun it's yeah. fun. It's fun to be here and show it off with everybody, and give everybody a laugh and a giggle yeah, because this all is we need awesome. every day is a yeah, good style and a laugh. So cool. Right? Okay. I'm Charles Hardrick, and this is my '69 Volkswagen. Uh, I call it a show car. So <laughs> <laughs> it's not really a drag car, but I made it. I wanted something different. 
something other that when you go to a car show, nobody else has. When it yeah, puts up the gas station, stuff. people stop and come over and look at it. <laughs> but it's been chopped 10 inches on the bottom. The front's been extended 12 inches. And all I bought was just a, a like a Baja cutoff buggy. And I built everything else. The guy didn't even give me a bucket of bolts or nuts with it. So wow. everything that's on there, I had to put together for a build. Wow. Even to the frame didn't fit after we cut all the doors off. Wow. Yeah. Are you racing here, please? No. No? It's slightly illegal to race. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of motor you have? It's a... Uh, Show uh, me the motor. All right. Yeah. Someplace else. <laughs> Mostly not Volkswagen. The tail lights are 34, 38 Chevrolet band. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 2110, all bored out with a turbo on it. Uh, and uh, just for looks, there's a nitrogen bottle inside. Oh, wow. <laughs> and about everything in there, the hoses came off of a closed dryer. Wow. The, the dash panel has come off of it. It's an apple wrench. Mm -hmm. The pipe that goes for the steering wheel come out from underneath the kitchen sink. And <laughs> the tail here, they come off of a, uh, a 1939 uh, Ford. That's oh. the fender brace. Oh. The tire goes through it sideways. And I was just wanting something to hang the third light on. But this was a project. I retired. I didn't, and I wanted to do, I just loved the smell of grind and torches and all that kind of stuff. So I built it. Oh, look at the uh, valve cover. That's the, oh. that's the big block shell oh. thing. Valve cover. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, so it runs wow. between 5,000 and 8,000 RPMs. Wow. Wow. So it does, it's not street drivable because it, at 5,000 RPM, you're still out. It's just idling. Wow. <laughs> so this is for the fuel cell? Yeah. Okay. The louvers here came off of the boat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know how, this, how hard it is to get to the electrical panel? Oh wow! There's the electrical panel. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Very cool. The bug is a skull. Mm -hmm. When you look at it all the way around, it's a skull. See the marks oh, on it? Yeah. But also, when you look at it, this right here has 40 skulls in it, and this has 40 skulls in it. So. <laughs> And the other thing that's unique about it, the bug, his eyes follow you. They look like they're looking at you, but the stand up here, they look like they're looking yeah. at me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. Very cool. I could have had a real nice thing on the wall for what I paid for it. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. My son just dropped his truck off to get it painted. So I'm Clayton Caps from Salado, Texas. I have Junkie the movie car, but I also have this treasure, and uh, I want to share it with you really quick. So this is a 1963, and uh, this is my daily driver car. M most people have their uh, older Volkswagen as their second car, just fun car. But th I'm kind of old school, and I'm stuck in the past. I drive this on average 50,000 miles a year. And uh, if I don't do 50,000, I at least do 45. <laughs> My current mileage, as you can see, is 1,063,655 as of today. And, uh, but the story of this car is, I bought this specific, I've been driving a Herbie since 1996. Uh, there were a few years where I would sell it, make another one and stuff, but I, I locked onto this car in 2005 because the original owner um, that had bought it years ago in 63 from Gorman McCracken Volkswagen in Longview, Texas, he, um, his name is Mr. Lee. Matter of fact, he's about to be 95 years old and he's in a nursing home and I, sometimes I'll still drive and say, hey, your car is still going. He gets the biggest kick out of that. Um, but he bought the car and this was his company car. He worked for the U.S. Department of Agriculture, and he clocked from 1963 through the late 80s, he clocked 600,000 miles on this car. So when the odometer would roll back to zeros, he would have it documented, and he has a book, and I've continued my own book 
about the date, the gas station I fill up at, the mileage, the octane, how many miles per gallon, anything I do to it just to keep it going. And so, yeah, so I bought this car in 2005. It was originally the L87 Pearl White. And uh, so I had uh, it re restored. It does have the original headliner in it, 59 years old. <laughs> and uh, I turned it into a Herbie. And uh, the first time, July, July the 3rd, the day before the 4th of July, 2005. So it's been a Herbie since July 2005. And, uh, but I drive this car everywhere. Um, the original 40 horse engine was uh, used up until the 70s. And then Mr. Lee actually went to a, seven, a 1600 CC. When I got the car, I ran the 1600 for a while, and then I went through this thing where I wanted to be a 40 horse again, so I put a 40 horse back in it. I sold the 1600 to get money for the 40 horse, and then I drove the 40 horse for a while, and then for two years I had a 36 horse in this thing. I drove it <laughs> just to do it. <laughs> and uh, then after that I went to a 1600 dual port, which is what it has now. Um, this is a little bit unique engine. It's still, it's still stock from the factory. Uh, but this is the engine out of this is from a 2004 Mexico Beetle, and uh, yeah, and they were um, from 1993 through 2004, which was the last model worldwide. Uh, they actually did fuel inject it, but uh, so instead of a instead of a carburetor, it's got the throttle body and and electronic coil. The distributor's advanced by the computer. It's got an, I did want the stock sound and the stock look of a muffler because all fuel injections have a one tip and a catalytic converter. Since this is a 63, I, I technically don't have to have a catalytic converter for that year model. So I put an oxygen sensor on the stock muffler. That way it still has a stock sound and everything. But, but even though it's fuel injection, it's still a dual port 1600. It's not a, a, not a big engine, it's just, but this is a factory engine. And I've, I've currently got 186,000 miles on this engine. And it's, got, it's, got, it's starting to sweat oil and stuff. And, and uh, when I hit 200,000, I'll probably go ahead and refresh the engine, do a valve job and a rebuild. I, I wanna, but you know, but I tell you what, it's 186,000 and I, I can still go 75, 80 down the highway, no problem. And it just does great. And uh, so, um, yeah. <laughs> I'm about to um, about to go on some big trips. Um, I, I drove to Florida for this trip, and uh, the first weekend of May, here in about a month, I'm going to be driving from Texas up to Wisconsin to go play in a music event, and then I'm going on a huge trip. Uh, the end of May, and May 27th, I'm going to leave and go on like a 6,500 mile trip, leaving Texas, going to go up to Colorado. Um, camp out at Yellowstone National Park, go to Glacier Bay in Montana, up to Washington State, do the Olympic Peninsula, drive down the uh, 101 California coast, see some friends and other Herbie friends in Burbank, California, and, and then go to San Diego, Las Vegas, Grand Canyon, <laughs> and back home. So, and everybody, everywhere I go, they says, you drove all the way in that? And I said, well, why not? You know, and they say, well, aren't you afraid you're going to break down? And I said, you know, the thing about, I would be more afraid to, that I would break down in a car that is just kind of stored in a garage and not driven much. But when you drive a car all the time, you eventually get to what, whatever's going to fail is going to fail. And if you fix it right and don't rig it, <laughs> but you know, fix it right. Um, th these are bulletproof. They really are. And, and do I ever break down? Periodically, this engine has actually never in 186,000 failed me internally. I've replaced like an oxygen sensor or a head temperature sensor because of fuel injection stuff. But same valve train, same pistons and everything. Um, so yeah, it's it's pretty, I, and, I, and I average 20, 27 to 32 miles per gallon depending on if there's a headwind or how fast I drive. Coming up here, I averaged 27. I got 30 one time. <laughs> So when I bought it, there was two, and he had the 40 horse continuously rebuilt all those years. And so, and then I went, the thing is, I was, I was switching motors even when the motor was running fine. I wasn't pulling it out because it was broke. So 40 horse, 1600, 
and then I put another 40 horse in it, a 36 horse. And, so this is the fifth motor. Wow, only yeah. this motor? Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. And like I said, the other motors were, you know, I just, I would pull it out and sell one just to get another engine. <laughs> Yeah, the, the key for me, and I've been driving these 32 years, is, is maintenance. And, and what I mean by that is if I'm on a long trip and, I've, and I'm like on this summer trip, I'm going to go 6,500 miles. Well, I, I change the oil on the trip. If uh, this specific engine does have hydraulic lifters on the valves, but, but even the engine before this, when I would go on long trips, I would park in the back part of a, uh, my hotel so I drain the oil and then the next morning when the engine's cool, I'll just get out and do check my valve adjustment. If anything needs to be tweaked, I'll tweak it. So the, the, whole, the old thing about if it's not broke, don't fix it is not for a Volkswagen. You, what you do is you maintenance it. So how, this was built to be maintenance. And it doesn't mean that's a negative thing. It's just, it's, it's a thing to keep your car alive. And I'm, and this is not me patting myself on the back, it's just that all I'm doing is following Volkswagen what they said. Every 3,000 miles you check, you, you know, you check your valves, change your oil, you know. If you're running points, which I, which I actually do on some of my cars, and I used to on this before this engine, uh, every 15,000 miles, I know this sounds, can points and condenser go longer? Yes. But I would go ahead and spend like $15 every 15,000 miles. I would just go ahead and change my points and condenser lube my distributor cam and uh, I never I never had points strand me ever I kept them fresh kept them adjusted every 6,000 miles I check my timing if it's off one degree I full advance the engine put a timing gun on it even if it's one degree off I don't say that's close enough I, I want it exact the other key that is and, and I'm this is something I kind of smile at because this is an argument amongst the Volkswagen community but if you're running a dual port engine and you don't have these extra air louvers on the engine lid, you notice this is closed. I've driven 186,000 in this engine and I've driven, uh, I drove over 100,000 in, in a regular like carbureted dual port. I never have the engine cracked. All I, all I do is make sure that your rubber seal and all your tin is in place. And the old German mechanic I used to go to for, for 20 years told me the key to cooling these is Yes, some people prop their lid open, but they but they said once you close this lid, if everything's in place at idle, you should be able to hold a napkin or a piece of paper right right here. And if that sucks to the louvers, that shows you that it's that it's forcing the the fan is creating a vacuum on the inside, and and it's forcing it to suck cool air from up here. So the extra louvers, a Volkswagen put them there, but they're not they're not necessary you can run them with the lid shut and I've, dri I've driven through death valley at 122 degrees i've driven th I'm, this past summer with over 100,000 miles on this engine i drove uh in 117 degrees 75 miles an hour for three hours and it it does not run too hot <laughs> wow. if it if it ran too hot i couldn't get 186,000 out of this so yeah, it's, it's a testament to the design. And one more thing about the louvers is even the late, even the late 70, uh, 70s cars that were convertibles, technically when you, the convertible doesn't have these louvers, they just have the louvers down here. So Volkswagen recognized that one set of louvers is technically enough. So it's just instead of having them here, they had them here. So yeah, but uh, that's the key to the maintenance of the car. It will get you there. Just happy to be here, that's all. Gail, thank you for, for all you've done. Right? How about a round of applause for Gail? Everybody should be fun with them. But I'm very happy to be here, and I love all these Herbies. They're so beautiful. Um, and it's an honor to still see that everyone is so in love with Herbie. I mean, he is the love bug, right? So. Going to pick somebody. Don't, don't try to, no, don't. I tell you, have you ever seen a crowd like this? They're begging you. 
Oh my goodness. Who's got the first to go home now, just real quick? Fargo, there's a Fargo. Philadelphia, you get one. Tennessee, that's, that's our backyard, Alabama. Huh? Orlando. That's a long distance. So um, with all that said, Greg's a really good guy. He's built this very, these very nice minis. And this is only for someone who paid the $150 to be here at the show today, this week. Okay, I want the $150 people to come forward. Okay. It don't matter. It could be his, it could be his birthday, whatever. Okay, okay, if you paid $150, this is gonna be here. Rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. We'll be done by midnight. Uh, Greg, do you have any that I believe she made up especially for the show? And if you're interested, please go visit her store before the, the day's over. Now Here we go. Right. We're rolling. Woo Tour around the gas station. <laughs> Shall I narrate? <laughs> We're traveling through the famous Bucky's <laughs> Mega Station in Daytona, Florida. Awesome. Bucky's draws travelers from across the world to a fantastic magical place of beef brisket sandwiches awesome. and delicious delicacies. And our mighty traveler, Shin, has the sample. We to the left. We expect many a food review. Good night.